now we move to um, unit six, which is entitled Technology and Change. Technology and change has very important vocabulary relevant to technology words. Um, so let's start with the vocabulary item number 5A on page 58. Item number 5A gets you words in the box and asks you to uh, guess whether the, these words stand for something that is out of date or up to date. Uh, he starts with behind the times. Behind the times means something out of date. Cutting edge means something modern, so this is up to date. Groundbreaking is again up to date. Innovative, up to date. Newfangled, newfangled is like something which is ultra modern or up to the minute, so it is again up to date. Obsolete means very old, this is out of date. Old hat is out of date. Outdated definitely is out of date. Outmodded is out of date. Pioneering is up to date. Redundant is out of date. Retro, okay, which means imitative. Retro means imitative of a style, so it is out of date. Revolutionary is up to date. State of the art, when I say that something is a state of the art, this means that most recent stage of development of a product, this means that this is up to date. We make use of these adjectives in exercise number 5C. Number one says, I don't understand those newfangled phones. I just want something simple that I can call people on. So I can su suggest using newfangled because this is something that is up to date. Number two, that device was, we can say, obsolete or um, let's say outdated. Before it even went on the market, nobody uses them anymore. Number three, this is really a groundbreaking, for example, or a revolutionary or pioneering development. It will change the way we communicate forever. Number four, it's not exactly cutting edge technology or groundbreaking technology or revolutionary technology, but it's still a pretty useful piece of equipment. Okay, this is for the vocabulary on page 58. Then we move to um, the reading passage on page 59, we have exercise number five, 9A. Exercise number 9A asks you to complete uh, the uh, sentences. We have six sentences. We are to complete them with the correct preposition. Number one, where does a fear of technology stem from? We say stem from, in your opinion. Number two, which item of technology has had the biggest impact on your parents. Uh, has the rise in, we say rise in, the popularity of social networking sites resulted in better understanding between men and women? Number four, does technology contribute to the happiness of mankind? Contribute to. Uh, number five is the expansion of robot, we say expansion of robot technologies, a good thing. Number six, do you think technological advances will lead to people living on other planets? This is how the words are followed by the correct prepositions. In the reading passage itself, we have important vocabulary, like for example, the word anti, anti means against. The word GM or French Stein foods means genetically modified foods. Sedentary means inactive. Superseded by or superseded by means replaced by. Uneven means unfair or unequal. Impetus means motive. Now we move to page 60, exercise number five. This is again a reading. We have an exercise asking us to match the words from one to eight from the articles we have on page 60 and 61 to their definitions from A to H. Uh, the word aspiration, which is number one, suits uh, letter B. Aspiration means a strong desire to have or achieve something. Number two, we have the word radiant. Radiant is letter C, which means heat or energy sent out in the form of waves. Number three, profound. Profound is letter A, which means having a strong influence or effect. Number four, Commensurate. Commensurate is letter E, which means matching something in size, quality, or time. 
Number five, the word trait suits letter D, which means a particular quality in someone's character. Number six, we have the word hunch. Hunch is letter F, means a feeling that something is true or will happen. Number seven is synthetic. Synthetic is letter H, produced by combining different artificial substances. And finally, we have the word chromosome. It fits letter G, which is a part of every living cell that contains our genes. And now we move to the grammar part, which is the passive voice. The passive voice, as we all know, is composed of verb to be in the tense of the verb plus the past participle. This is um, explained in detail on page 144. If we go to page 144, we will find that we form the passive with a form of be plus past participle. We can use the passive in most tenses. Example, the company was started. This is um, that the original should be somebody started the company. A prototype will be produced next year. Okay, you can say that the company will produce a prototype next year. 200 people have been invited. So we can say that the family has invited 200 people. We can use the passive in the present and past continuous but we avoid other continuous forms. We can say his behavior is being monitored. So we can say that somebody is monitoring his behavior. Your proposal was being considered along with several others. So we can say the board was considering your proposal along with several others. This is enough regarding the passive form and kindly check exercise number nine. The answers is uh, like what you see is number one goes with letter E. Um, the technician was sacked yesterday. Here we have the agent is obvious. So number one is A. Number two is F. The final chapter sums up all the issues that have been discussed throughout the book. So we want to focus on issues rather than on the people involved, especially in scientific and academic English. Number three goes with letter C. The trainees were impressed by the brand new state-of-the-art laboratory on the ground floor. Here, if the subject of a sentence is long, we often make the verb passive so that the long phrase comes at the end. Number four goes with letter D. Penicillin is one of the most widely used antibiotics. It was discovered by Alexander Fleming in 1928. So it goes with letter D. We often make a verb passive so that new information comes at the end. Number five goes with letter E. Mistakes were made. So here we want to avoid mentioning the agent so as not to blame someone or avoid responsibility. And finally, we have two sentences left. Number six, the research will be carried out next year. This goes with letter B. The agent is unimportant, or we don't know who the agent is. Number seven, safety glasses must be worn in the laboratory at all the times. This goes with letter G. We, were we are describing rules and procedures. So these are the different uses of the passive form, but watch the formation of the passive, which is verb to be in the tense of the verb, plus the past participle of the verb or the original verb. Um, then we move to page 62 with the reading passage, 10 years in how Google raised ahead. Uh, we have um, exercise number four. This is on page 62. Uh, exercise number four is um, number one could be innovation. There has been a lot of innovation. Number two is infrastructure. Uh, number three goes with enhancement. Uh, number four goes with initiative. This is exercise number four. And number five goes with magnitude. Um, move to exercise five that you have already on your PowerPoint. Um, find and underline nouns in the article which combine with the words below to make common collocations. Business, number one, we say business school. Number two, physical, we say physical environment. Number three, we say information technology. Number four, we say market survey. Number five, software component. Number six, suggestion box. Now we move to vocabulary on page 63, where we have idioms with get. The idioms with get are very important. Number one, get somebody down. Get somebody down simply means disappoint 
them. So this goes with letter E. I know this technology course. This is exercise number eight, by the way. Number E says, I know this technology course is frustrating, but don't let it get you down. So number one, which is get you down, suits letter E. Number two, get on somebody's nerves. To get on somebody's nerves make means to make them nervous. This suits number B. My boss has an annoying voice. It really gets on my nerves. Number three says, get the hang of something. Get the hang of something means learn how to do something. This fits letter A means, um, uh, this again, sorry, this fits, yes, number three goes with letter A means Peter, the sentence, Peter is really struggling with the new technology. He just hasn't, you know, got the hang of it means that he has not mastered it number four says get on like a house on fire to get like on to get on like a house of fire means to be very um you know uh, compatible to be on good terms together to means that they can deal or people can deal easily with each other this fits the letter c the computer support guy is really helpful and friendly we get on like a house on fire Letter D, um, then this is followed by number five, get off to a flying start. Uh, get off to a flying start is to do the task quickly and successfully. And this again goes with letter D. We went on a team building course and our team got off to a fly. We completed the first task ahead of all other teams. And now we move to the last item in this uh, unit, which is the causatives. Causatives means to cause something to happen. This is again highlighted on page 144. Grammar three, the causatives. We use both have and get plus past participle to say that we didn't do something ourselves. We didn't do something ourselves. This means that somebody did, did it for us, but caused another person to do it. For example, we had our photos taken after the ceremony. We had our photos taken. This means that somebody took our photos. I got my hair cut at Stella's last week. This means that somebody, you know, cut my hair. Or it can be something we don't want to happen. For example, I have my bag searched every time I go through customs at the airport. So somebody searches my bag against my own desire or interest. Another example, my husband got fired from his job yesterday. Of course, he did not fire himself, and this was done against his will. This is explained on page 144, so please go through it. Now we come to the exercise. We have only one exercise. It's exercise number 10, exercise number 10A. Number 10A says, in which sentence is the emphasis on the fact that Ali was responsible for arranging the action? A or B was responsible for arranging the action. It's letter B. He had his apartment redecorated. It means that he wanted some or he hired someone to redecorate his apartment. So this means that he is responsible for arranging the action. It's not Ali's apartment that was redecorated. No, he had it redecorated. Number two, in which sentence is the emphasis on having an experience rather than on arranging the action? Having an experience or arranging the action. Let, have a look at letter D. Nadine had her car repaired at the weekend. This is an, you know, arrangement. But of course, had her har car stolen is not an arrangement. It is an experience. So to answer the question number two, in which sentence is the emphasis on having an experience rather than on arranging the action? Of course, it's letter C. Okay, this is the end of unit six. Thank you.